Earlier in the course, we took a look at the precedence constraints in SSIS. You remember these? This was, you know, if this is successful, then go do this. If this fails, then go do that, right? Well, we took a good look at them, but we only took a look at actually part of them because one of the parts has to deal with expressions, and we had yet to take a look at expressions. And so since we're here, let's go back, revisit the idea of precedence constraints. I'm going to need a new package, so let me go ahead and create one. And I'm not really interested in creating some super fancy package. About the only thing that I care to do from a package standpoint to show you this is to make sure you understand when SSIS is going to go where. Uh, so what I'm going to do... Um, I'm just going to bring some script tasks in, and we'll make one called entry point, and it won't do anything. Uh, we'll make another one called on success, and another one called on failure. And, you know, we would do our normal, hey, this happens on success, and we want to change that by right-clicking on the little arrow to be failure, right? Nothing nothing fancy and inside of our script tasks I'm gonna be a little silly and pop up a box that just says what we did so this was the success one and we'll say success and then we'll do VB on the next one because we did C sharp on that one and guess what? It's the same line of code minus the semicolon. Uh, so system dot windows dot forms dot message box dot show failure. Okay. You know, I mean, nothing fancy at all. It makes a decision, and since this task ends successfully, then it calls the on success, and the on failure was ignored. Okay, well, you know, before we go forward, let's go back to our entry point, and let's change the script, and I'll use C sharp down here. And I want you to note that we have here an enumerator, an enumeration, called script results and that it ends in dot success. Well, we could actually change that to dot failure. Okay, so the result of running this task is equal to failure. Well, what is failure? Well, we can actually take a look at this by right-clicking and going to the definition. It's here in the same file. You can actually see this is part of the code when you said I want Visual C Sharp and you clicked edit script it extracted this from the template and it made an enum called script results and it assigns failure equal to DTS exec result dot failure so we can force the task to fail okay that's what we're going to do and you know usually you do it with like an if statement if a value is not greater than a variable then you'd fail but so we're gonna force it to fail and I haven't done I had to guess, I really haven't done anything that you ex probably haven't seen. This one failed, it then called the on failure. Okay, all right, so you're up to date. You know what you thought was everything you needed to know about precedence constraints. However, if we right click on these, there's this little edit tab. And when we choose edit, notice that in the evaluation operation, there are more things than just a constraint. We can choose an expression. So in other words, it's not doing a success or failure constraint. It's testing to see whether an expression evaluates to true or false. It could do an expression and a constraint. If both the expression evaluates to true and the constraint is success, for example, continue on. Or expression or constraint. Well, the first thing to do, let's just get the idea of the expression down first. So let's choose expression. So notice that the value goes away. We're not dealing with success or failure. Now what this, if evaluates to true, 
continue. Okay? That's really what you are testing here. Okay? We're not dealing with multiple constraints right now. So we're just going to say if this evaluates to true, continue. So we have to type in some type of an expression. So do you remember the equality operator in the expression language? The double equal sign. One equal one. Right, uh, this is like your hello world for programming, right? Anytime you want to just always test a Boolean, a true, you can always say one equal one. Uh, so we click the test and it comes back that it was validated. And so now you notice that our little line has changed blue, but we have this little kind of a function looking icon here that tells us that this particular precedence constraint is built on an expression. And so this is how you can actually partition, if you will, parts of your package. You could come up here and say, uh, you know, I want the value of the variable uh, the year if it equals 2009. Go ahead and test it. Make sure that it works here. Um, the problem is we don't actually have a variable called the year. If I did, then we could parse it. I uh, just kind of talking and typing here, but you could actually say if the value is 2009, I want to go execute this whole branch. But if the value is 2008, I want to execute this particular branch. Right? This is really, really flexible inside of SSIS. This ability to change your precedence constraints to use an expression here. So really simple. I'm going to say now, I'm going to go back to my previous example here, 1 equal 1, and let's test that. And now take a look when we execute our package here. We come back with success. Now wait a minute. <laughs> you might be wondering, oh, well, we also came back with failure. You might be wondering, but success, Scott, we didn't end that task successfully. No, no, we didn't. But here's the question that we have to answer here. Did 1 equal 1? Right? If that was true, then it was going to go on and execute this particular task. So it's no longer, like I said, success and failure. It's true false. If it evaluates to true, it will go towards it. If it doesn't evaluate to true, it simply won't execute that branch.